once again, and welcome to yet another episode of 10 Minutes with Ronald, the show that nobody's watching, and, oh, no, the show that nobody cares for, and nobody, nope, the show that nobody asked for, and nobody is watching. I forgot my catchphrase because I'm a little flustered as I'm, am I there? Oh, cool. Yeah, but it's a little delayed. All right, that's fine. Uh... I forgot my catchphrase because I'm a little flustered as I have my first guest today. As you know, last week we talked a little bit about the OJ trial and I'm sorry, the OJ documentary and reflections on that. And I gave a little bit of what I thought about it. However, I forced my friend Phil here to watch the entire thing so that we could talk about it. I had a couple other friends that wanted to, but some of them were unable to appear on camera. Others were unable to actually be here. So with that, I'm here with my friend, Mr. Philip Wilkerson. I will let him introduce himself. So, hi, I'm Philip Wilkerson. Uh, welcome here at my, my home bar, the Loose Shoelace Saloon. Shameless plug. Um, I'm a native of Virginia, born and raised here. I went to Mount Vernon High School. Um, that's pretty much it, really. Love, <laughs> love working out, drinking bourbon, raising my son and my beautiful wife. So, Excellent. There you go. Phil is the proud owner of a new son. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. The proud parent to a new son. We don't call him owner. I own him, yeah. <laughs> the new owner, and he has a dog who's enjoying his bone here, and he has a lovely house, which I appreciate him inviting me into in order to do this. So we got a we got a hi from Denise. Hey Marilyn. Hey Marilyn. That's Hello. my sister. How are you? How you doing? She's the only one that watches. Awesome. Uh, so anyway, uh, give me some quick, uh, just some quick hits on what you think about the documentary itself, whether it be your filming style, your initial thoughts after watching well, it. One, I would like to say that it was probably the one of the most captivating and interesting 30 for 30s that has ever been filmed by ESPN. Um, I think they did a great job of breaking it into five segments. I think every segment had a specific purpose, um, uh, did a great job, so I, I really liked it. Um, and it really, each episode was very thought-provoking that even before this show, I was still asking questions and prodding and, and processing and then after he told me we we're going to do this, I had to take, it felt like I was in class. Like it was a, <laughs> like a sociology class and I was taking notes. So I think it was a well done documentary. I think it was, I think it had a lot of content. I think a lot of brought a lot about social issues about race and privilege and status and all kinds of things with the aspect of sports. I think it was well done. Excellent. So a uh, quick hitter. Did he do it? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go on record. This is Philip Wilkerson's opinion. I'm not representing all black males or everyone in my family or anything like that. But yes, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that OJ did it. I would agree. I think uh, they did a good job of... I think the, the document documentary definitely had an angle. Mm -hmm. And I think they did a, definitely did a good job of showing how he definitely was not just accused or a suspect, but he was the actual perpetrator. I think they actually showed a lot of that and they showed how the defense did a brilliant job of actually defending him which a lot of people were upset about well i mean this is this is you know uh, i think the main thing about justice and whatnot is i mean even i don't know if you know if you told a defense or not their main job is not to prove you know, like he didn't do it or not they are supposed to attack the persecute uh, the um, prosecution prosecution mm -hmm. i always get that word messed up yep. prosecution and find a flaw to create a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, you know, attacking the, the police, not attacking them per se, but finding a flaw in their, their judicial process, whether they mishandled evidence, whether they went by procedure and things like that. So the defense did that. Now, on the flip side, the when you are pers uh, persecuting someone, you're supposed to have the jury, without a shadow of a doubt, say, hey, this person's guilty because what they're going to be doing is sentencing this person for a significant amount of time. And they really did not do that. I feel like they, I don't feel like the defense won the case. I feel like the, the opposite side, they, they, they literally lost the case. They, they did a terrible job. So the onus was on the prosecution to Speak actually... Speak up, guys. Speak up. Oh, sorry. So yeah. the onus was on the prosecution in order to actually, it was the onus was on the prosecution in order to uh, they had the burden of proof, and that's right. how it is with all cases. And you're saying that um, rather than the defense doing its job too well, the prosecution didn't do their job well enough. That's I, I think that I mean yeah, pretty much to sum it up. Okay. Now I also I think taking it a little further 
is that <laughs> uh, Furman was probably the worst person to ever be the first cop on a scene of all time. By far. Because they literally attacked, like, because of his character, his who he was, being blatantly racist. Yep. Um, he made their, like, it, literally they started from a disadvantage. I, I, I really think that they kind of knew that they were kind of in a hole. And to overcome him uh, was going to take a lot. And, you know, I'd say with Johnny Cochran and his team, they, they it was blood in the water. And Absolutely. They, and they were sharks. Absolutely. And they found that weakness, exposed that weakness, and literally destroyed that man in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in a sense for that case. And whether it's wrong or right, they did their job. So I can't. I can't fault them for doing their job, and they did their job, and that's how OJ, you know, was acquitted for that first time. Let's back up a little bit and talk a little bit about the larger theme of blackness. Yeah. Uh, it seems that blackness was one of the biggest themes, starting with the first part, how OJ cast down his blackness right. in order to be accepted as a celebrity, um, until later when he's in a relationship with a black woman, he then cheats on her with a white woman, right. he then marries the white woman, he then beats the white woman, he then allegedly kills the white woman, right. he then puts back on his blackness for the trial. Let me rephrase. I don't think he put on his own blackness. Okay. Uh, I would say, like, you know, I mean, okay, maybe slightly he put on his own blackness. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, societal, society, even his white counterparts, his white friends, mm -hmm. put on his blackness. Yep. Um, they were like, oh, you know, oh my God, you know, I never looked at OJ like this. And then after, you know, supposedly he murdered her, oh, OJ is now a black man. Yeah. Um, you know, even the black community, oh, he's a sellout. He's so quote unquote an Uncle Tom. Mm -hmm. But then when he's under trial, mm -hmm. he's one of us. He's facing oppression like us. Yep. So in that sense, I feel like not only did OJ quote unquote claim blackness by flex society mm -hmm. after you commit a crime, which you know sounds very terrible to say, then quote unquote he's like us. He's black. So we're all culpable. Yeah. So I think I feel that like on both sides, I feel like everyone yeah put on the blackness on him. I think to uh, to an extent, I, I agree with that. I think we definitely cast blackness on him, but I would say during the trial, he definitely did not have a problem with being black. Oh, he played it up. He, when, it, when it was to his advantage. Well, he played it up. Um, I was definitely, definitely noting that during, like, he was actively a participant in this trial. Absolutely. Which was kind of creepy to see that he was actually taking notes. Yep. He was, like, giving suggestions to the lawyers. He was active. And... They knew that was an active strategy. Mm -hmm. That was an active strategy by the defense to say this is another black man that's being oppressed. Mm -hmm. They went to his home. What did they do in his home? They took all his pictures with white people down yep. and put pictures with black people up. Yep. So it was an active strategy to present him in that certain light to, like I said, to to put him in the image that he's like us. He's being oppressed like us. Um, and then I think secondary is like, what I liked about the 30 for 30, which you brought a good point on, mm -hmm. was that it it took OJ's trial, and not only was it one person, but they kind of like showed, they showed the, the, the micro, which was like him, individual, but then they brought it out to the whole city of LA, and maybe yep. the United States, yep. you know, what was going on, you know, whether it was civil rights and whatnot. And I think perfectly that that trial in the cosmos of where things, events lie in the world, happened at a time where it probably would have been different at a different time. Mm -hmm. It happened right after Rodney King's beating. It happened right after, I can't remember the girl's name, but it got shot by Natasha Hines. Hines. Natasha Hines, yeah. right after that. Mm -hmm. So, literally, it rolled right into that, that the whole community was already angry. The mm -hmm. black community in LA was already angry. Absolutely. So, let's say, maybe it happened pre-Rodney King, mm -hmm. or pre uh What's it, Natasha? Uh, Latasha Harms. Latasha Harms. Would it be a little bit different? Would the, would the we never know because it's hindsight's twenty twenty. But I think that the way that it played out into that, like it was almost like domino effect. It was it was chipping away. Did you find that? Uh, did you? I I found myself at one point during the documentary getting chills because I felt like uh, there were parallels, so many parallels between Latasha Harms and Trayvon Martin or between some of the uh, Black Lives Matter, the protesters, and the protesters of the time, who were essentially saying and doing the same things during the protests in LA that they're doing in protests that were happening as early as 2014. It seems like the uh, same things seem to be repeating themselves. Did you ever get that feeling of history repeating itself a little bit? It always, I mean, I think so, you know. Um, just, in, you know, like, they always say that history is a study of the past so that we, 
a lot of people, I remember one of my history professors was like, I hate the, the notion that we study history to learn from the mistakes of the past. Because he's like, because if you really look at it, it, we don't really learn anything. Absolutely. And things happen over and over again. Absolutely. So obviously I think history, when you look at history of things in the past, I think it's a rubric of what things are happening. Obviously if you study it and you, and you really are like involved in history, you can recognize that, hey, this is playing out again, you know, and, and be more proactive to, to change, uh, social change and whatnot. But I mean, you know, you can take, okay, black people, um, you know, segregation and, and civil rights. Well, it's playing out again with a different community. The L, you know, the LGBT. L, LG, do we learn from, that's a group of people being oppressed, and now it's a new group of people being oppressed. Mm -hmm. And then it goes from, you know, I say Christians to Muslims, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So it's like, are we really learning from the past or are these reoccurring things? So when we see things like, you know, people being beat or, or teenagers being shot um, by police officers or whatnot, I mean, like you said, there's such we've seen these we've seen these issues before. Um, so I don't know. I think yeah. I think that the OJ OJ uh, film brought up those things as to show how they're relevant how it's relevant to now. But it's not like it's different. Okay. Yeah, I would say there's definitely nothing new now. And I'd say, especially when we're looking at trials, and there was a trial of the people who were in the Rodney King beating, and it was folks. So it's funny because. At the time, they were not guilty, and a lot of they showed the emotions of the black community and all that. And it's very funny because uh, the Freddie Gray trial just got finished in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and all of those cops were found not guilty as well. And it was it was a little quieter, it was a little muted, more reaction to this. Mm -hmm. And I, as I thought about it, I'm, I just I really it makes me think that we're looking at this documentary that kind of blatantly shows in your face several things. It shows you that the system is broken and can be exploited. Mm -hmm. Right. Yet, we sit there and we continue to have the same problems over and over again right. because we refuse to fix a, a broken system and we f refuse to uh, fix broken policies and broken uh, traditions, right. if you will. That And it continues to repeat itself over and over again. Right. I mean, you know, things have gotten better. Things are a little bit different within within time. But, yeah, I think, obviously, it's chipping away mm -hmm. at the... At the structure of how things are yeah um obviously the structure of how things were in the 1960s is different than now but does that mean it doesn't need to be continuously just you know yeah ignored or saying just because it's better than the 1960s that we settle exactly so i do agree with that and you know, chipping away at it but um i don't know. i mean that yeah i agree with that you really have no no counter argument to that okay um but you know um no, I can't wait. Things kind of blanked out. I think that's because I think that's, sometimes is when they have these, you know, having these debates with people. You know, when you actually say, "Yeah, I agree," and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I really agree with that. Yeah. But I kind of not say I'm taking over, switching gears. Mm -hmm. I think one of the main things that irked me about the OJ thing is that this kind of is another cyclical thing yep. of playing out into the fear of the black man with the white woman propaganda. Okay. Which we have seen out played out in literature. Like yes. I say King. one of the greatest Shakespeare plays, Othello. Othello. Yeah, oh, right? well played, sir. So Othello, well played, right? sir. We see it play out in like Birth of the Nation. Birth of the Nation. The old one, you know, like, oh, yeah. the, the scary black man. King Kong. King Kong. Yeah. And What's the so, one with Harper Lee? To Kill a Mockingbird? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think about oh, yeah. But you see how this is played out. Yeah. And I think OJ is the personification of that in a real life situation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many times I guess you'll see that mm -hmm. combination of a successful black male with a white woman, assuming that he is with that white woman for status or whatnot, and then that something is gonna happen to that woman. Are we about to get in trouble? I don't know. Are we about to get in trouble? Oh, we... oh okay. Okay. We talk. We thought we were being too loud for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was about to have our executive producer come in here. Y'all need to shut up. He's leaving the table with his phone. It's knocking the camera. Oh, right. thanks. Oh, you can see it? Oh, snap. What's up? Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah, she really is. It's EP. Okay. All right. So I was going to say, all right, there's a couple of things about that. The first is that it's unfortunate. <laughs> the dog is nudging the table. <laughs> <laughs> the unfortunate thing about that is a couple of things. The first thing is that it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if we look at OJ in this light, OJ was a black guy who did leave a black woman for a white woman. For a white woman. I don't know if it was for a status symbol, but he left and he was with her. But then for him to start beating this woman, 
and still be treated as a white celebrity almost. When I say that, cops are coming to his house. Is everything okay? Yeah, no chip. real arrests are made. Yeah, 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 exactly. Chip. No real arrests are made, made or anything like that. That's the part of it where I say he cast down his blackness. But that being said, I do think there's a larger discussion about interracial dating and interracial relationships in general, yeah. which is OJ did the ultimate thing that I would say most black women hate, which is that you left it. <laughs> You left the black woman when you were one thing. Uh, the Kanye West. Exactly. Yes. When he yes. Gets put on, he's going yes. for a white girl. Yes, basically. exactly. Yeah. And I think that's like that's a perpetual myth, uh, which is that now that I'm at status, I'm going to go with the white woman. Yeah. When in actuality, most celebrities are going to be with whoever they're going to be with. Uh, uh, most people, most human beings. Thank you. Um, yeah, don't now, me. like, but at the same time, it only takes a few examples for that to be a nag Yeah. Has that happened? Yes, it has. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Is it always happening? No. Most times, when you say that it's happened, like when people think of it now, when it happens, like on our scale, I mean, I'm I'm for an interracial relationship, mm -hmm. but obviously you see that I'm, I'm a, like, there's no what status or oh, <laughs> <laughs> so like in the common man that's not a true case. But, you know, you do see in Hollywood, you see movie stars and things like that. Yeah. So I mean, to it's it's I, I see it discount it you know i mean i see it validated but i don't believe 100 percent you know the validity of that yeah um but it, you know i think also the interesting part about oj's dynamic with it with being with a white woman is that yeah you're right like he exerted power mm -hmm. and that when he finally had this coveted woman that he wanted yeah which he said like literally when he met her for the first time i'm going to marry that woman he, yeah. he coveted this woman that he beat her yeah which is crazy. Yeah. And then, uh, supposedly, or all the things that, what drove him crazy is that he couldn't control her. Yeah. So thus he beat her more and led to actually killing her. Yeah. So I just, I think that's crazy. I, 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 he was actually, I mean, I believe that he was actually a crazy person. Yeah. So I don't know his mindset with that. And I kind of wish my friend Jaleel was here because he pointed out that he asked me, he says, do you think that there's any chance that OJ had CTE? And when he said that, I was like, oh. Talking about the um, concussion? Yeah, the chronic tra traumatic uh, encephalopathy. Well, I mean, okay, concussion or not, I definitely think that if you pull open the DSM, mm -hmm. you know, um, he definitely had, like, tick, 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 some kind of actually yeah. personality disorder. Absolutely. Uh, he definitely was narcissistic. Yes. Um, I don't know the other ones. I mean, he was crazy. I mean, he was a crazy <laughs> person. Just go down the list. Yeah, just go down the list. He was yeah. crazy. And, and some of the things that was scary about him, which with personality disorders, is that he could prevent, be charming, mm -hmm. we call the OJ effect. Yeah, you got juiced. You got juiced, <laughs> and then be a monster behind the scenes. Exactly. That, that so to the point that people were actually surprised that he would do such a thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually playing, I even wrote my friend, and I said, I feel like I got OJ, because at the end of the whole documentary, I, felt, ter I felt terribly sad for him. Yes. Like when, yes. They, when they panned out of the, uh, the jail and yeah. showed how isolating the jail is in Nevada. Yeah. I felt actually bad for OJ. I absolutely did. I felt towards the end, I was like, I can't believe this happened to him. You know, it, it was funny because, it, it, like, the, it's the, the whole tale is so twisted. You find yourself rooting against OJ. You find yourself rooting for OJ. You find yourself hating this man, liking this man, whatever. We're talking. So, timekeeper, we're at, we're at 18 minutes. Okay. We're going to need to wrap it up soon. So, let's go through some of the comments, which we want to okay. say. Maggie said, I'm watching and listening. Hey Maggie. Hey Maggie. Thanks for letting us be in your house. She said, "Is that vodka or water in your cup?" This is water. It's water. Um, they can't speak up. Baby's asleep. Boss lady is correct. Thank you, Maggie. Speak up. Okay. Um, Sam Nang says, "I like Mark Berman. He's trolling." All right. <laughs> Sam, you're 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 out. Get out. Get out of my. Stop watching. You seem like a stand-up guy from the hand. Yeah. Yo, come on, man. This dude. This is why you can't take it no. Is man. it bad? If it was bad, so he was black. Um, yeah. Now, Marcus said he never claimed it. I, I would kind of disagree with that. I would too. Because remember right afterwards? His cl wait, the murder or? No, the cl I think he said he never claimed being black. Because that's right oh. after the, the sense that OJ never claimed his blackness. Now, I would actually when he was in church, he was claiming his blackness. That's what I'll say. He was in church, he was claiming his blackness. And remember when he went to that, um, that like, meeting? And he said to the community, I'm sorry I let you guys down. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never do that again. Yeah. You know, la, la, la. And he was trying to go to uh, 
Roscoe with yep. chicken and waffles yep. and all that stuff. So he was quote unquote trying to he was but, trying, but, but he didn't I, have any fans. I, I, but yeah, but I, I think that he kind of reverted back when he moved to Miami and started yeah. launching, you know, athletically because life went downhill. I don't know if he's claiming whiteness. And he said, and then <laughs> Marcus said, both of y'all got juiced, and I, I, I just flat out do agree with that assessment. <laughs> I literally was by myself saying, why do I still feel bad for this dude? Why do I still feel some sort of feeling at all towards this guy? Is <laughs> yeah. the real question. Yeah, and if babies sleep, they can't. Oh, turn the volume, mate. Oh, turn. So, yeah, we probably would talk louder. I wish we could turn it up, but, you know, next time I think we'd invest in a little, like, microphone. Yeah, we need to get a mic. It's clear. I feel like we should do this again for other issues. So, you want to jack my show? No. Jack, he's jacking my show. No, I'm not going to jack your show. <laughs> no, no, we could definitely do it I'll, again. I'll probably do random random appearances, maybe in the background. <laughs> yeah, he just show up and be like, hey, man, what's up? Where does we ride? See you later. And Phil. Um, yeah, we'll definitely do this again. Um, so... Just to recap, we just talked a little bit about the OJ. So we're putting this topic, I'm putting this topic to bed now. Yeah. I've live tweeted it. I've talked about it last week on my show. I've talked about it with Phil. I think I'm done talking about OJ, at least for now, until he does something else stupid. Maybe you should ask him um, what other topics they like and stuff. Uh, well, for the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about the pitfalls of dating. But I don't know about that life. But, <laughs> but I'm I am interested if anybody has a topic that they would like me to cover. Or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, any of that, uh, inbox me, tweet me, bonesbiground.com. We'll leave it in the comments for you. Yeah, leave it in the comments. Yeah, leave it in the comments. That's even better. There you go. I'm trying to be like your uh, media man. Yeah, I mean, you you have good advice. You told me to get a tripod, and you told me to download my stuff to YouTube. So there you go. You're killing it so far. I tried to. So next week, we'll be talking about the pitfalls of Taylor with my, uh, I'm sorry, the pitfalls of dating with my friend Jessica Taylor. Mm. The week after that, we'll be talking about the pitfalls of dating with my friend Michael Jefferson. And uh, we're going to continue the show. We're going to keep it going. Let me know what you guys want to hear, the four or five of you that are watching, or the none of you that are watching. I'm watching now. This is the show that no one is watching and nobody asked for. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Phil. All right. We are now going to watch an episode of Game of Thrones. I'm going to talk through the whole thing. And that I've already seen. So, I'm probably going to talk through the whole thing, too. Thank everybody who watched. Again, this is 10 Minutes with Ronald, the show that nobody asked for and nobody's watching. Normally I'm on the other side.